Hey folks, this is Riker with a Diablo 3 patch 2.5 Season 10 Demon Hunter build guide. Now for at least the past 5 seasons, one of my Twitch mods, the Argonaut, has been joking that the Shadow's Mantle set would become meta in Season 10. And it turns out he was right. Thanks to an introduction of a legendary power to the Quiver Holy Point shot, the Shadow's Mantle set is now viable for Season 10. And more than that, it may see the Demon Hunter take a place within the four-man meta. We have a video where we fully explain the four-player meta, or just the multiplayer meta in general. Two, three, and four-player parties. The different roles the characters play. DPS, support, etc. And it's looking like the Shadow's Mantle Demon Hunter, the Shadow Impaled Demon Hunter, might be able to replace a Generator Monk for single-target damage within the group meta. It also makes for a very strong solo pushing build. While it may not be the absolute most powerful Demon Hunter build, it's probably at most a couple Greater Rift levels behind the tops. It's also a much easier build to play than, for instance, Legacy of Nightmares Fan of Knives. This Shadow Impale build has some of the best single target DPS in the game. And in this video, we'll go over the skills and gear that you need to be wrecking Rift Guardians like they're nothing. On the test server, I've seen this build push as high as a Greater Rift 96. The Greater Rift level that you're seeing me do here is just a 76, but for most people, that's high enough. It's high enough to do your season objectives, and what's noteworthy here is that this is my very first attempt at a 76. I have next to no experience with this build, I don't have particularly optimized gear, and overall it felt really easy. Sometimes builds feel like a struggle, especially when it's one of your first times using it, this was pretty much a cakewalk. Alright, let's take a look at the gear that we need. This build revolves around a couple key components, and the first is that you absolutely must have the full 6-piece bonus of the Shadow's Mantle set. 2-piece bonus gives you a big damage buff when you're wielding a melee weapon, which we will be. 4-piece bonus gives you every rune on Shadow Power and makes it last forever. And the 6-piece makes you deal a crazy ton more damage to the first enemy that Impale hits. It is this particular bit that makes us build the ultimate single target killer. But what really makes this build now viable is the introduction of a legendary power to the Holy Point Shot Quiver. Previously, it was just the only quiver that can roll with elemental damage, but now in addition to that, it makes Impale shoot out three rather than just one dagger or throwing knife. And while initially this did not seem enough, throughout the test phase, Blizzard changed this, buffed it, such that all three daggers can strike the same target, and they all benefit from the Shadow's six-piece buff. And that is what now makes this build viable. The last thing that you'll need to absolutely finalize this build is Carly's Point, the dagger that lets you return hatred, otherwise you're gonna run out of hatred way too quickly. And it's actually really easy to get this weapon. If you just upgrade rare daggers in the cube, there's only two that can roll a smart loot for a demon hunter, so it's very easy to get yourself a Carly's Point. Carly's Point? Carl! Because our hatred will always be topped off, we're gonna want an Aquila Cuirass in our cube. This build actually has a ton of survivability, which is pretty rare for a Demon Hunter build. We're gonna want a Dawn in the cube because we're working in Vengeance, because that is the Demon Hunter meta that we live in nowadays. And you're gonna want to maintain 100% uptime on Vengeance. That's gonna be giving us more survivability. We'll want a convention of elements in order to pump out some more damage, and we'll want an elusive ring for even more damage reduction. It's very important during play that we maintain that buff on the elusive ring, so at the very least cast shadow power every eight seconds. You might not want to vault every eight seconds because sometimes you want to stand still, but uh, if you are standing still, at least pop shadow power. You don't need to because it's always on, but you're just using it to proc the elusive ring. And the reason you want to be standing still is because we want to work in the Traveler's Pledge and the Compass Rose. This set gives us a nice damage buff when we want it and a nice survivability buff when we want it. We gotta stand still to get that damage buff though. The last two items we'll want that combine well together are the Strong Arm Bracers and the Chain of Shadows. We are using the Chain of Shadows to basically have free vaults all the time. And because of the rune we're going to be going with on Vault, which is Rattling Roll, which is going to knock back enemies we vault through, we're going to be able to proc our Strong Arm Bracers. 
Just be aware of the crowd control resistance that monsters have. After getting crowd controlled a couple times, elites, champions, they build up crowd control immunity. So you ideally want to maximize your use of your strong arms. Try to time that with your convention of elements rotation. As for what you want on every gear piece, starting with our shoulders, we ideally want dex, vitality, all resist, and cooldown reduction. Now for cooldown reduction, we're aiming for a total of at least 36% cooldown reduction. We can get that by having cooldown reduction on just one piece of gear, having a diamond in our helm, maxing out our paragon points in cooldown reduction, and having a sufficiently high level Gogok of Swiftness. If your Gogok isn't good enough, you might want to get cooldown on a second piece of gear. You need at least 36% combined cooldown reduction in order to maintain 100% uptime on Vengeance. In the gameplay, you see that I have a little bit of downtime on Vengeance. I ideally would have wanted to roll cooldown on another gear piece. We'll also note that wherever you can, you want to squeeze in as a secondary property, life after kill, and we'll explain why in a little bit. For our helm, Shadow's Mask, Dex, Crit, and Impale damage. We're sacrificing some vitality here, but this build is really tough. So, it's fair to squeeze out some more damage here. For our amulet, we want lightning damage, crit and crit. For our gloves, dex, vitality, crit, crit. If you need that cooldown, here's a place where you could put it. And you may be wondering why we're not going for area damage in this build. It's mostly because we're going to be strictly hunting for elite packs. For our chest, you want dex, vitality, and then another defensive stat either reduces damage from elites or life percent. Don't go with armor because that's suboptimal here. You could also go for all resist, but you're better off going with life percent or reduces damage from elites and then getting a secondary resistance. If you don't have a secondary resist, then all resist is fine. For our bracers, strong arms, Lightning damage, dex, vitality, crit chance. For our belt, dex, vitality, all resist, and life. For our pants, you want dex, vitality, all resist. For our boots, dex, vitality, all resist, and impale damage. For our convention of elements, damage, crit, crit. If you don't have a ton of dex, you can always get dex instead of damage. Particularly if you don't have an ancient ring. Also, between your convention and your elusive ring, you'll want to cube whichever one is worse. You want to try to get as close to possible max rolls, particularly on those special properties. For your compass rows, you want to get full-on offensive stats, dex, crit chance, crit damage. You could also go with pure damage here as well. Uh, even area damage, it's not the worst stat to get, it's just that area damage isn't as important in this build. Again, because we're specifically targeting elites, rift guardians, that kind of stuff. For our weapon, Carlay's point. Percent damage, dex, attack speed. Typically, you don't go for attack speed because of resource issues, but in this case, resource really won't be an issue, so having that faster attack speed will help us take down our targets more rapidly. And lastly, on the holy point shot, we want lightning damage, dex, attack speed, crit chance, and impale damage. It certainly doesn't hurt to have max discipline on it, and it's also beneficial to get stuff like chance to freeze on hit on your belt, for instance, little things here and there that just help out in the end. It's not going to make a world of difference, but if you're absolutely looking to maximize, then these things do help. For our gems, we want a Bane of the Trapped. We want a Gogok of Swiftness, mostly for that cooldown reduction. And we want a Bane of the Powerful rather than a Bane of the Stricken. We take down targets so quickly that Bane of the Powerful tends to be more useful than a Bane of the Stricken. Also, because we're specifically going from Elite Pack to Elite Pack, we'll basically never lose this buff. Onto our skills, we'll want Impale Ricochet. The rune isn't actually super important here. The reason we're picking Ricochet is not to kill more monsters, but in fact to return more resource. Again, with Carlay's point, Impale returns hatred if it is an enemy already impaled. So in order to generate resource, you basically just want to toss impales into a crowd of mobs. While running Ricochet, I never had resource issues. We'll want Companion Wolf Companion just to squeeze out a little bit of extra damage when we want to. We'll want Vengeance Darkheart for that toughness boost. Again, we're going to be vaulting and skipping through monsters, so we really want to keep that toughness up. That's one thing that differentiates this build from most Demon Hunter builds that aren't really able to skip through monsters all that much because they're very much glass cannon. With this build, you can get your toughness quite high up there, and you can pretty effortlessly skip through monsters. We'll want Valley of Death marked for death. Yes, this will cost discipline, but because we're always vaulting for free, we gotta have some discipline sync. 
and this helps us squeeze out a bit more damage. We're taking Vault, Rattling Roll, as we said, and then for Shadow Power, just pick the rune that you think looks the coolest. By having every rune of Shadow Power, we are gaining life per hit, and that is being buffed by our life per kill. That's why we want to stack life per kill. I've actually found that you can take some damage with this build and then rapidly heal back up to full, thanks to your healing ability, your recovery. The Nightbane rune is an effect that is basically like the slow from Bane of the Trapped, but even more powerful. Blood Moon gives us even more life per hit. Wall of Darkness reduces the cost of this skill, so you could pop it while trying to remain stationary in order to maintain your damage buff from your uh, Traveler's Pledge and Compass Rose set. Gloom gives us more damage reduction, and Shadow Glide increases our move speed. I think the biggest disadvantage of this build is how difficult it is to go back to any other build once you become accustomed to having that 30% move speed buff. For our passives, we'll want Ambush, that's just a great offensive skill. We'll want Numbing Traps, that's a defensive option. It's going to reduce the damage that our enemies are going to deal to us. And of course, we need Call the Weak. Pairs really well with our Bane of the Trapped. And as for the last one, you can go with either Leech or you can go with Awareness. Basically, Leech gives us even more recovery, whereas Awareness gives us that free life. So, six of one, half a dozen of the other, it's basically what you prefer. For our Paragon points, you want to get max move speed and then dump everything into Dexterity. For Offense, start with that cooldown reduction. Again, that's going to help you maintain permanent uptime on Vengeance. Then go with Crit Chance, Crit Damage, Attack Speed. For defense, go with life, then all resist, then armor, then life per second. Then for utility, you can go with area damage, life per hit, resource cost reduction. Now, if you want to see some really pro Demon Hunter gameplay, you can check out Wudijo, W-U-D-I-J-O. You can find him on Twitch and on YouTube. He's one of the world's best Demon Hunter players and theory crafters, and you can learn a lot from watching him play. And that wraps up this video. Leave a comment with your thoughts. Do you like this build? Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch and Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo 3 guides.